Well, we do have some developing news. The former First Lady of the United States, Rosalind Carter, has been diagnosed with dementia. That's according to a statement from the Carter family, which goes on to say, very typical Carter fashion, really. The former First Lady continues to live happily at home with her husband, enjoying spring in Plains, Georgia, and visits with loved ones. Joining us now, ABC News medical contributor, Dr. Alok Patel. So, uh, Dr. Patel, Rosalind Carter, she has been uh, one of the nation's uh, leading mental health advocates for much of her life. She was first lady to the 39th president of the United States back in the ni uh, 1970s. She's, they both really walked the walk of the Gospels and doing good works Absolutely. after his time in the White House. Now she's living with this condition. It affects so many people around the country. First of all, what can you tell us about dementia? My mom had Alzheimer's. What's the difference there? How do you, how do you describe this? Well, Terry, when we look at dementia, what we're really talking about, and this is whether you're looking at the CDC, Mayo Clinic, Alzheimer's Disease International, experts will tell you, dementia is an umbrella term encompassing symptoms such as cognitive impairment, issues with remembering things, difficulty performing regular tasks throughout the day that can be caused by different diseases such as Alzheimer's, but also other diseases as well, such as certain types of vascular issues, Lewy body dementia, frontotemporal dementia, which is why it's so important to get these symptoms looked at early. Now, you're absolutely right. Rosalind Carter has been such a strong advocate for this, and it's important we talk about this because according to Alzheimer's Disease International, someone will be diagnosed with dementia worldwide every three seconds. And even in higher income countries like ours, experts estimate that less than 50% of people are actually recognized and treated for this. So are there risk factors uh, for dementia? You know, the biggest risk factor out there that's documented right now is age. But there are other modifiable risk factors as well, such as certain chronic illnesses, Terry, such as obesity, diabetes, hypertension. But there are other risk factors that are really important that we talk about, shed light on, and that public policy is directed towards, such as elderly people being isolated, not having that social interaction with people, even hearing impairment, smoking, being surrounded by air pollution is also a risk factor also. So there are things that we can collectively do hmm. as a society. This is including people who are caregivers, have people in their house who are at higher risk, lawmakers, and the public health sector. You know, and, and Dr. Patel, I'm thinking of that this couple, Ro Rosalind Carter, 95, she'll be 96 in August. Uh, former President Carter, he's 98, I believe, he'll be 99 in, in November. Uh, and so they share this love story spanning now 77 years. How, uh, what role does having a supportive partner and the kind of partnership that they seem to have, uh, what, what role does it have in health, in mental and physical health? It absolutely does, Terry. You know, I will give you a qualitative answer. I can't tell you by how much it reduced their risk, but having that social connection, having that empowerment, having some type of reason to wake up in the morning and be excited is so incredibly important, not only for preventing cognitive decline, that's a medical term, but for also living with more fulfillment, which scientists believe can lead to a longer, more fulfilling life. It's so important that we all kind of pay attention to that and we reach out, we make sure that people don't feel isolated in today's times. And I just wanna go back to something that Rosalind, Rosalind Carter herself said, it's that there's only a few people, type, there's only a few types of people in the world and it's all surrounded about being a caregiver. You've either been a caregiver, you're gonna be a caregiver, you're gonna receive care or you have received care. So that's why this is a conversation we should all be collectively having. Hmm. And I love that, that love and fellowship are healthful uh, in life. That's the way we're made. Uh, Dr. The best type of medicine. We are wired for that. Well, I'm going to go home and get some tonight. How's that? <laughs> Thanks very much, Doc. Thank you. Hi, everyone. George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.